Welcome to the American Dream, a show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city, that now spans positive media all across the country, real stories in real neighborhoods. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and here's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show. The real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. It's not just about what you're living in, but the community you're going to live in. It's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream. Here we are back in Kirkland at the Heathman Hotel, and we're going to be interviewing Brandon, the general manager from the Heathman Hotel, and then we're going to Ryan James Gallery and interviewing Ryan James. Can't wait for you guys to see what we have in store today on American Dream. I'm here with Brandon at the Heisman Hotel. He's the general manager. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having me, Susan. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, my, my name is Brandon Maeda. I'm the uh, general manager here at the Heisman uh, Hotel in Kirkland. Just a wonderful location. Uh, you know, we're, we're very excited to be here and be a part of the, this amazing uh, Kirkland community. Yeah. Can you touch on any of the amenities and services that the hotel offers? Well, absolutely. So, you know, we are very fortunate to have a, a wide array of different kinds of activities for our, for our guests and, and different amenities. You know, we have a 24-hour fitness center. Um, we're very pet friendly here. Uh, we have in-room dining. We have a full service restaurant and bar. Um, and just all the, uh, the, the comforts and amenities that you would imagine in, in just a wonderful hotel like this. It's amazing. I love your restaurant here with the patio in the front on a great day, charcuterie board, some wines. Yeah. Um, you know, once the, the warmer weather comes, as you said, charcuterie board, yeah. it's frosé, I mean, you name it, all the things that we love to do and, and love to do with, you know, our friends out on the lounges, those things become uh, part of our, our everyday here. The yeah, visit, the, so. the location is phenomenal in downtown Kirkland, between the marinas, close to everything. Absolutely. We've been here for business conferences, and I'm looking forward to a staycation not too far from my home, but... Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to meet you, and I look forward to seeing more of you. Hey, thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for visiting. Sure. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your gallery and some of the installations and how it all started. Yeah, uh, well, we're actually coming up on our 13th anniversary. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Uh, we'll this August. That's so great. We're very excited to have hit that milestone. We originally opened in Bellevue. Oh, okay. Uh, we're there for a year when the city of Kirkland actually poached us. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, so my gallery, we focus modern abstract conceptual works. Uh-huh. Uh, it's kind of our uh, focus and so we represent 25 artists, okay. uh, both local and national artists. We have a pretty even mix. We have 10 out-of-state artists that we've invited to be part of the roster. Right. And we focus on artists who work in a series format to build a greater body of work. Uh, so we really enjoy seeing consistency from an artist and an artist who's telling a story. Oh, okay. Uh, something that they want to share with the community and share with the world. And we get to be a part of that process when the guests come in. We get to take them through what we're showing for the month. Uh-huh. Uh, every month, it's a different exhibition. I ask you. So all the parties we host are open to the public. Uh-huh. And they're free to attend. Okay. And we have the artists on hand so that you can meet them. And most of the time, the artists will take you on a little tour of their work and oh, discuss that's... what they're doing and what they're creating. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, ceramicist Ann Lindsay. Uh, she's also local out of Washington. This is called her cut top vases. Oh. So as she's forming the piece, uh, she'll cut it and then the clay will kind of overlap and fall to where it's going to sit. Then she'll fire it and then create the colors of the work. Very cool. I love that. And then we have a uh, Bellevue photographer, uh, Sharon F. D'Amico. Oh, these are great. <laughs> and then these colors are amazing, too. Who's that? Yeah, this is a new artist for us. Uh, this is Cynthia Bjorn. Uh, she's out of Missouri. Uh, this is actually another Kirkland artist. Uh, this is Valerie Washington. This is her gem series. Oh, thank you so much for having us. I yeah, love having sure. you guys here coming <laughs> to your events and your theme parties yeah. here. So Ron's thank coming. you, Ryan. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us on American Dream TV in Kirkland, Washington. Join us next time on American Dream TV. Welcome to Wilkeson, Washington. I'm Don Halbern, your host. Get ready to explore with me today, Sunset Lake Camp, a hidden gem in Wilkeson. Let's go chat with the executive director, Dave Yeagley, and have him show us around. Hi, David. How are you? So nice to see you. I'm you so excited well. to have you show us around Sunset Lake Camp today. And let's dive in and have you share a little bit about the vision of the camp and you know, what are you guys all about? At Sunset Lake, we say, you belong. And that means that every child that drives through that gate and comes here for a week of camp, we love them for the person that they are, we value them, we accept them, we wanna give them a place where they can have fun, they can experience adventure, and they can build community. We want them to experience a way of living that hopefully they can carry back to their world and change the world that they're in. Oh, that's awesome, I love that. So what about camp sessions and classes? What do you have that you're offering for that? We have seven weeks of camp. We do uh, some day camp opportunities for kids ages five through 10. And then we have overnight camps for kids ages eight through 17. And then they get to choose their morning class activity. And we just have a full range of activities, anything from our waterfront to ATVs and mountain bikes and crafts and nature classes. The list goes on and on. So, um, do you still have a blind cap? We, we do. Um, we, we've done blind cap for many, many years uh, through Christian Record uh, Services for the Blind, and they sponsor kids to come and spend a week with us. Um, and we give them all the camp opportunities, even though they, they do are, they're visually handicapped. That is really, really cool. So, how long have you guys been in operation? We started in 1957. So, it, wow. we've been around for wow. 60 some years. And uh, I personally have been here for 19 years, so I've seen a lot here wow, at camp. Wow, that's amazing. What about wild animals? I bet you see some animals up here. Oh, one of the joys <laughs> of coming to camp is experiencing the nature that we have all around us. Um, obviously, when, when kids come, the thing they see the most is some deer that are almost as tame enough to walk up and touch. Wow. We have elk on the property. If you're lucky, you might see uh, some of our more elusive creatures like a bear or, or a bobcat or once in a great while, a mountain lion slinks through the property. Oh, but, that's yeah. really cool. So what's your favorite part of being the, the executive director up here? The favorite thing that I do as a part of my job is to work with the young adults that come here every summer and to see them grow and develop, to watch them um, become better leaders. That's the, the beauty of camp. I, I pour my life into these young adults and they get to watch them pour their lives into the life of campers and see that change happen in their lives. So that's the rewarding part of my job. And some of those actually came to camp here, right? When they were younger. So it's oh, kind of a, yes. a baton thing where they're teaching the new ones. A lot of our, our staff members will come, they want to get a job at camp and they'll say, I want to give back. I received so, so cool. much from camp, I want to give it back that's to the That's really child. cool. Well, thank you so much for your time You're today. Welcome, I really Dawn. appreciate it's it. A and I to just meet you. love this camp. It's Good. just really, really cool. Thanks for spending some time with you us. You bet. Thank you. All appreciate right. it. Nestled in the foothills of majestic Mount Rainier, Sunset Lake Camp is more than a place, it's an experience. It's an inclusive environment where the diversity of backgrounds, ages, and stories are celebrated. From wakeboarding to ziplining through the forest canopy, Sunset Lake offers it all. It's a place where adventure, community, and grace are intertwined. Whether you're seeking adventure, spiritual growth, or simply a memorable outdoor experience, Sunset Lake Camp aims to create a welcoming and enriching environment for all who visit. Thank you for watching and remember the beauty of Sunset Lake and all of what Wilkeson has to offer is just a visit away. I'm Don Halbern, your lifestyle and real estate host to the American Dream. See you next time.
Welcome aboard. The story begins in Gig Harbor Bay, a picturesque location in the heart of Puget Sound. Join us as we enter the fascinating commercial fishing world of adventure and romance. Get ready, grab your gear, toss the lines as we head to the open waters. Incorporated in 1946, Gig Harbor is one of the most picturesque small cities in America. The city was named by members of the Wilkes Expedition who in 1840 entered the harbor in a longboat called a captain's gig. Gig Harbor has been a salmon fishing destination from time immemorial, as local tribes seasonally harvested salmon from its local streams. Commercial fishing became Gig Harbor's principal industry from the moment three Croatian immigrants arrived in the 1860s, having rowed south through the waters of the Salish Sea from British Columbia. They stayed in Gig Harbor and founded the boat building and fishing traditions that still exist today. The Persane Sea Fury is a seasoned salmon commercial fishing vessel. It is operated by experienced Captain Greg Lavervich and his crew. Sea Fury and all of Gig Harbor's fleet are a vital part of the fishing industry, venturing out into the waters of Alaska, Puget Sound, and the Pacific Ocean off of Washington's coast, where Gig Harbor-based vessels harvest salmon, crab, herring, and other types of seafood. So here we are today with Greg Larvervich. How did you start fishing? Uh, it started when I was 12 with my dad. 12? He threw me in a skiff, and in the power skiff, to tow the end of the net. I've only spent, what, two summers home since. Wow. Tell us about the Sea Fury. It was built in Bellingham by um, a family. There was five of them built, actually. There was only two left, and uh, it was by the Glenovich brothers that built them. And uh, then I bought it, and it was they had the Yankee boys, Yankee, Yankee boy, Yankee girl, and then I bought it and we named it the Sea Fury. So that, I've had it since 1990. I started fishing my dad for a number of years and then I couldn't afford to get into purse aining, so um, I bought a gill netter, which is a smaller operation. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a two person operation. It could be done by one person. And then I went one year with a good friend of mine and he had to fly home to go teach school and then I did it by myself and I didn't like it very well by myself. So I made my wife quit her job and, and uh, she fished with me for eight years. And we gilded it for eight years in Southeast Alaska. I think that's amazing that she fished with you for eight years in Alaska. Yeah. That's amazing. Welcome to our special segment through the history of commercial fishing and the Gig Harbor Boat Shop sponsored Crew School, a Persane Vessel crew member training program where participants learn what it's like to crew on a commercial fishing vessel. Celebrating Gig Harbor's historic working waterfront and the craft of wooden boat building, the mission of Gig Harbor Boat Shop is to perpetuate working waterfront skills, uses, and traditions at the historic Eden Boat Yard and aboard classic vessels of Puget Sound. Join us and help provide our community access to hands-on boat building and repair and working waterfront activities, including crew school. Guy, how did crew school get started? Well, Greg Lavrovich and I saw a need to train potential crew members and introduce them to the possibilities of crewing on a commercial fishing vessel. Back when I was a kid, it was difficult, if not impossible, for some to get on a fish boat. It was such a, a popular thing to do, go to Alaska and make your summer money. Nowadays, it's been turned on its head for one reason or another. For that reason, and we wanted to introduce potential crew members to commercial fishing, the idea being they could self-select 
to a degree and not get to Alaska and decide this isn't for me. That's the inspiration. I'm excited about the commercial fishing home port that you've told me about. Give us an update. Well, we're excited too. And it's true that commercial fishing has a storied past and a, a vital present, but it's harder to see than it once was, given the reuse of many of the fishing family waterfront properties. Fishing boats are now clustered at the few remaining private fishing family properties, or in many cases, local fishermen need to moor their boats in other towns. Gig Harbor is the only place we know of from Southern California to Northern Alaska that continues to rely on private property for, for commercial fishing fleet moorage. We're at a crossroads and just a few properties away from losing the fishing traditions that define this town. The future of commercial fishing is here at the city-owned Ansich property. This site is a historic fishing family property designated for public commercial fishing use. And the home port design is complete. Over a million dollars have been spent to date, and we are all hopeful that the city will continue to push the project to get it to completion. Until next time, mate. Thank you for joining us in this exhilarating adventure into the world of commercial fishing and the waters of South Puget Sound. I'm Julia Runyon, your hometown host, and we are living the American dream. Welcome to the American Dream TV, where today we embark on a journey of tranquility and wellness right here in Kirkland, Washington. We are right here at the very doorstep of Von Sauna. We're about ready to go in and meet the sauna master, David, who is the designer of this floating sauna right here in our very own Kirkland, Washington. Let's go on in and take a look. All right, David, thanks for having us here. This is amazing. The views, the floor to ceiling windows. And what is the temp here? We're at like 190 something degrees. I'm not even gonna look. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit, you know, about the experience here in the building. What do you do when you're here? How does this work? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, the vast majority of our guests book online before they arrive. Okay. Um, and they tend to book what we call a social sauna session. So it's a seat in the sauna for a 75-minute right. session, um, and uh, there are 10 seats available, so you might be meeting new people, um, or you might just be sharing it with a couple of others. These 75-minute sessions give everybody roughly, you know, three to four cycles of heat, so probably 10 to 15 minutes inside of the sauna. Okay. Um, you know, free to ladle on as much water onto the rocks as you like to create some steam. Okay. Um, and then, you know, when you leave the sauna, you go straight to the cold water, mm -hmm. you do your plunge, People plunge from anywhere from 10 seconds to five plus minutes. Mm -hmm. You do a little cool down, which is usually my favorite part. It's okay. the most kind of endorphin rich part of the experience oh. where you're out of the cold water, you're feeling really warm um, and uh, you know, endorphins and, and kind of norepinephrine rush. I like to lay out, close my eyes a little bit and then come back in the sauna. And you okay. can probably do that three to four times. All right, so it's a whole experience. I don't know about you, but I can feel the heat. It feels amazing, especially being here in the Northwest. The whole experience of being in here with the heat, with the sun, looking at the water, and then going into the cold plunge. It's amazing that you brought this to us. Thank you so much. And I just encourage everyone to come here and, and try this out. This is so unique. Our journey and wellness continues right here in Juanita Kirkland at Rubicon Float Studio. We're going to go inside and talk to Robert, the owner, about how solitude in silence with floating promotes healing and restoration. So come on in, let's go talk to Robert. We're now inside of Rubicon Float Studio with Robert, the owner. I would love for you to describe the whole experience from showing up and checking in, getting into the floating device. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so when you arrive at Float Rubicon, we greet you at the front. We kind of check you in, make sure you got everything with you. We take you back to the room, kind of go over the whole process for you, <laughs> give you some time to be alone in the room. You do your first shower, it's kind of a quick rinse off and everything. Okay. You go ahead and hop in the tank. 
We give you a whole 90 minutes at our studio. You're in complete control of the process. Uh -huh. So basically from start to finish, you can control how much light you want in there. Okay. If you want the door open or closed, uh -huh. um, if you want music to run throughout, you can do that as well. Oh wow! So it okay. gives you an opportunity to have a sense of control. So Robert, you're back there, you're weightless, you're floating and you're relaxing. So tell us a little bit more about the health benefits of that. We like to talk about it in two senses. The first is the mental aspect of things. Okay. And the second is the physical aspect of things. Okay. So what happens when you enter the float tank, mm -hmm. after a certain period of time, you enter something called a theta state. So okay. the way you process time is differently, and it's also restorative. So it's like a form of meditation for people. Nice. So for the mental aspect of things, once you get into the tank, after about 45 minutes, almost everyone goes into that state. So okay. it gives you a chance to disconnect from reality, mm -hmm. gives your brain a chance to process. Mm -hmm. It gives your mind just a chance to rest. And eventually right. you come back to who you are. Yeah. And then once you get out of the tank, you do a quick shower, it gives you a chance to kind of sit on the bench afterwards and process what happened during the float. You can also start to feel how it affected you physically. Okay. For a lot of people, it lowers blood pressure. It can help get off of sore muscles and joints, athletic recovery. So a lot of people are really relaxed after they float. Perfect, it sounds so easy and it sounds like it really just takes the edge off of all of the heaviness of the stress. It's a super simple way to give your body a chance to rest and recover. Perfect, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing all of this today. Today we have seen how Kirkland is a canvas of wellness and restoration with Vaughn Sauna and with Float Rubicon Studio. I hope this has inspired you to go and seek wellness here in Kirkland, Washington. Thank you for watching the American Dream TV and keep on dreaming. and welcome to American Dream TV. I'm your host, Lindsay Heitloff. I'm here with my business partner, who also happens to be my father. Hi, I'm Gary Heitloff. And today we are shining a spotlight on 20 Corners Brewing in Woodenville Warehouse District. This brewery was built by and for the community, embodying the true essence of the American Dream. Then we're gonna hit the baseball fields where Woodenville Little League plays a ton of their games. Woodenville Little League is a pillar of our community, inspiring and shaping the dreams of our youth. But first, I think we should go grab some beers. Sounds good. We are here with the head brewer, Spencer, and he is in charge of all the magic that happens behind here. So can you tell us a little bit about the process and if there's something that you guys are doing different? Uh, well, something new we're doing is working with a genetically engineered yeast that uh, does a better job of freeing thiols from hops. And thiols are a molecule that's super aromatic. We can, uh, we can detect them at 20 parts per trillion. So they really bring out an aromatic punch from the beer. And that's a new tool we, we've just gotten access to. So that's something cutting edge and sort of I'm looking forward to doing. How long does it take the process to make a beer? Uh, brewing the batch actually takes about eight hours, but after that we have to put yeast into the wort that we've made and uh, ferment it, and that takes about seven to ten days. It ends up being about three weeks before an IPA is uh, ready after we've brewed it. So if I ask you for a special recipe, make me an IPA, it could technically be done in what? Three weeks. Like you could tell <laughs> me every flavor you weeks. wanted in your mouth and I can make that happen for you. Perfect. What do you love most about being part of this community here in Woodenville? You can get about any beverage you could think of made within a few miles of here, fresh and uh, there's great food and restaurants. We have, you know, just a really uh, wonderful community of 
flavors and smells and you can get whatever you want here and that's it's a great thing for me. <laughs> and speaking of restaurants, you serve food here too, we right? We do. We make our own dough in house. We have a wood stone pizza oven and we can uh, we can get you fresh beer and fresh dough and food, pizzas, folds, folds, it's pretzels, you know, it's all made in house, so the combo is perfect. We like to think it's pretty good. And you can watch sports, you can bring family, friends, kid friendly. Lots of TVs, we got outside seats. So we try to give something for everybody and make sure everyone's happy when they come. We are here at the baseball fields and the thing I love so much about youth sports is that it's so much more than the game itself. I think you would agree with that too. There's so many life lessons to be learned in youth sports. There really is. I mean, all these kids, they get out here and they learn how to play on a team and teamwork. They learn how to listen to their coaches. They, they learn how to win gracefully. They learn how to lose gracefully. I mean, there's all kinds of life lessons. The community makes this whole thing happen. The coaches are volunteers of our community. Yeah. The parents are also helping in the dugouts with snacks, keeping with the support. Score. Yeah, keeping score. And some of the umpires too are parents. And so it's just, overall, it's so community-based and there's so many life lessons and it's just a great place to be. As we wrap up this segment, I want you to remember in your own field of dreams, keep swinging for the fences, keep brewing up those big dreams. I'm your host, Lindsay Heitloff, and I can't wait to show you all this community has to offer in the future. In the meantime, keep dreaming and keep believing. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show, produced from America's finest city, but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media at the American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American dream.